Now if you take pre-calculus, you're going to get a lot of what we're going to do in this video here, only in much more detail. I want to talk about solving very simple logarithmic equations. So something like log base 5 of x is equal to minus 2. Here, when you just have a logarithm on one side, and that's it, and a number on the other, and that's it, all you have to do is convert this to an exponential. So remember, I have to rewrite this, so it's minus 2 equals log base 5 of x. So this was our y, log base a of x. Well, that's nice, x is x, so we don't have to do any tricky conversions. So then this is going to flip to, let's see, a to the y equals x. So in our case, a is 5, y is minus 2, and x is just x. So the solution to this is 5 to the negative 2 which, in a more familiar format, we can move 5 squared to the denominator and change the sign of the exponent. And then 5 squared is 25. So the solution is 1 over 25. And that's really all there is to do here. If we look at something like 38, We've got log base 5 again, but of x plus 1. And once again, we have it equal to minus 2. So if I rewrite this so that everything's in the right order for our conversion, things will probably look pretty similar, except x is now x plus 1. So I'm going to switch the minus 2 and the 5 to make this 5 to the minus 2 equals x plus 1. And now I'm just solving something that's really familiar. I'm just going to have to subtract 1 from both sides, and I'll be done. And remember, we saw that 5 to the minus 2 is 1 over 25. So I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 1. I'm going to rewrite that on the left-hand side and 5 to the negative 2, I'm going to rewrite as 1 over 25, what we saw a little bit earlier. And now if I subtract 1 from both sides, I'm going to have to have a common denominator in order to combine these two. So I can have you know, one nice number as the answer. So this is going to have to be 25 over 25, and 1 minus 25 is minus 24. So our answer is minus 24 over 25. And might as well do more examples in this video. Make this an example video as well. Let's see. On 40, we've got something a little bit different. we've got the variable in the base here. But if we treat this like the past two examples, let's see where that's going to get us. Might get something out of it. So we're going to swap these two around, so it's going to become x comes first, minus 1 is second and is an exponent, and then is and then one fifth is the last thing to appear. Now x to the minus one, we can change that to x to the first if we put it in the denominator. And x to the first is just x. So we have one over x is one over five. 
Well, you can multiply both sides by x and then multiply both sides by 5, but the truth of the matter is, in order for this side to be this side, x had better be 5. And you'll find out through all the complicated multiply both sides by x, multiply both sides by 5, you'll end up with this very same answer. So since we're going ahead and doing examples, I want to do a compound interest example. This is uh, 92. And we're going to use the compounded continuously model, which is the PERT model. So that is the P, or uh, sorry, A equals P E to the R T, where E is that weird number. You know, that 2.718 blah 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 number. So on 92, they're asking us, what's the interest rate that's going to double our money? compounded continuously in six years. And it seems like they're giving us far too little information here to do anything with it. For instance, we don't know, you know, we're trying to find R, what rate so we want to know what's the value of R that's going to satisfy these conditions. We know T is 6. We know we're trying to find R. But what about A or P? What should those be? Well, it turns out it doesn't really matter at all. You can just make them up. So let's say you start out with $100. The only restriction on making these up is that you want the investment, you want this to double. So you want A to be twice as much as what you put in. You want A to be twice as much as P. So if we just let P be 100 and A be 200, let's see what we can get out of this. So we have 200 for A, 100 for P, E is its own weird number, we're trying to find out what R is, and we know T is 6. So the thing to do here is to get the exponential by itself. So divide by 100, and 200 divided by 100 is just 2. And r times 6 we write as 6r. So if I rewrite this so it's in the standard form, I can now convert this into a logarithmic form. Before, to solve the equations, we were converting to exponential form. But now we've got an exponential where the variable sits in the exponent. So this is where logarithms are incredibly useful, is that when you have variables in the exponent, you switch it to a logarithmic form. And hopefully, you've switched it into something you can solve. So this is our a to the y equals x. So this becomes, this switches into y equals log base a of x. So in our case, y is 6r, a is e, so this is log base e, or ln for natural log, and x, what's x? x is 2. So we have 6r equals log base e of 2, and I'll rewrite that as natural log. 6r equals ln of 2. Now, ln of 2 is some weird, nasty number.
but it's just a number. So if we're trying to solve for r, think of this as just a number. Your next step is to divide by 6. So it's going to be natural log of 2 divided by 6. And if we turn to our calculator to figure out what this should be, along with exponential buttons, most calculators have log buttons as well, most advanced calculators, or scientific, I guess I should say. So log base 2 divided by 6, this is roughly 0 0.1155. So a little under 11.6% interest. And that's just another, that's a nice example of where logarithms uh, are extremely useful, is when you have an equation with the variable that you're trying to solve for is sitting up in an exponent. Logs get variables out of exponents and allow you to move further in the problem.